Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, August 17th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We still have three storms, though Fred has moved inland and is now moving toward the Appalachian Corridor, bringing impacts now to parts of Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, and the Carolinas, and will continue for the next couple of days as it tracks northeastward and weakens, with rainfall being the primary threat. We're going to shift gears now toward the two remaining storms over water. We have Tropical Storm Grace currently moving near Jamaica and newly minted Tropical Storm Henri taking a looping track south of Bermuda. We're going to tackle Grace first. This is the close-in satellite loop showing a more robust circulation than we've seen over the last couple of days. As soon as we look at the loop, we'll notice quickly that there's a lot of looping flow around the west side of the circulation, and the circulation is centered somewhere in here, likely over the island of Jamaica. And this is a healthier look to the system than it's had for the last couple of days, where the circulation is no longer small and fragile, but pulling in inflow from larger distances, and this is a sign that the circulation is more robust than it was. This is the recon data from the plane that's been circling around the island. Here's the coastline of Jamaica right here, and the plane hasn't been able to fly over the island because it's dangerous, but it has been finding winds out of the east at about 50 miles per hour or thereabouts at the surface, indicating that there has been some strengthening of Grace's max winds over the last 24 hours. And it's likely that the system is over the island given that there's easterly wind along the coast. And if we look at the radar animation out of Cuba, we can also see that the semblance of rotation places the circulation over the island of Jamaica. Now this island is large enough and mountainous enough to disrupt the inner core of Grace during the transit over the island, but it's small enough that that transit takes only a short time, so it's unlikely to fully disrupt the intensification trend of grace and reorganization is expected to be fairly quick on the other side given that the structure is otherwise healthy uh, despite the fact that it's over the island right now. If we look at the water vapor satellite animation we'll see that grace has a large field of deep convection in whites here and the one environmental factor that remains slightly unfavorable for the system is the presence of this thin upper level trough to the northwest which we've been mentioning for the last couple of days and this is continuing to impart just a little bit of westerly shear on grace and you can see that if the system is centered over the eastern half of jamaica right now most of the white colors here are on the eastern side of that location as opposed to the western side so there's just a little bit of westerly push on the circulation causing some degree of shear However, it doesn't seem to be enough to prevent the wrapping around of convection on the north side of where the center is, and that's a key indicator that if convection is able to rotate around toward the upshear side, intensification is likely once this pops out west of Jamaica. The key here for the Cayman Islands and then eventually the Yucatan Peninsula will be how quickly Grace can form an inner core, and by that I mean a ring of central convection that begins to form an eyewall structure. If that happens quickly to the west of Jamaica, that would be a sign of more uh, swift intensification as it moves westward. But if it takes a while, then it could delay the onset of potential hurricane intensity, as Grace is expected to become a hurricane at some point during its transit across the northwestern Caribbean. This is the GFS upper level wind forecast for Wednesday morning, showing the storm moving toward the Cayman Islands here, and this thin upper level trough still poking toward it to the north. And again, this will impart light westerly shear over the area, but it's not intense enough to prevent intensification of grace, and we're likely to see continued organization of the system as it moves west. In an area of the Caribbean that is known for favoring intensification, we have some of the deepest, warmest water in the Atlantic, and deep moisture is always present here. So really, if there's not enough shear here, we're likely to see some intensification as the storm looks robust with its current structure, and once it emerges west of Jamaica, we expect that to occur. And if we look at the steering flow at 500 millibars, we'll see where Grace is now, and we have this developing ridge off the eastern seaboard of the US. That will expand over the Gulf of Mexico. So by Wednesday morning, you can see the ridge poking out here over the Gulf of Mexico. And that will continue directing the storm westward into the Yucatan Peninsula. This is a fairly certain forecast now. Once we got grace south of Hispaniola and Cuba, once that became clear, 
all the options for going northwest into the eastern Gulf of Mexico or north of Cuba kind of vanished and now models are in excellent agreement that this track toward the Yucatan Peninsula will occur and landfall somewhere along this section of Mexican coastline is likely. And as it continues to cross the Yucatan, the westward track will also continue. Ridging continues to build over the North Gulf Coast, and whenever this happens, we tend to get tracks that are right into eastern Mexico, somewhere along this section of coastline by the time we get to Friday and Saturday. And the NHC forecast has shifted all the way down now to that kind of track toward Tampico, Mexico, or somewhere around there after crossing the Yucatan on Thursday. There is now a hurricane watch along this section of the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula and tropical storm warnings for the Cayman Islands, eastern Cuba, and of course Jamaica, where the storm currently sits. Flash flooding in Jamaica may be the biggest concern, similar to what has been happening in Hispaniola due to the heavy rains there associated with grace. The mountainous terrain means that rainfall and flash flooding is one of the biggest concerns. One more thing to watch for regarding the track is exactly what latitude Grace reorganizes on west of the island of Jamaica. Given that it's over the island right now, it remains to be seen exactly what position here it organizes on the other side. That could determine the launching point for the rest of the track toward the Yucatan and whether it's more toward the southern side of this cone or the northern side of this cone. That will obviously matter for the Cayman Islands in terms of maximum wind impacts and also for areas like Chetumel farther south along the Mexican coastline and northern Belize in terms of potential impact. So we'll watch for short-term track nudges over the next day and a half as this transits the Western Caribbean. Weakening is likely once this crosses. Typically storms cross the Yucatan and are knocked down a significant amount and then take about a day to fully recover typically as they move across the Bay of Campeche. And so it's difficult to tell exactly how strong this will be on its second landfall. We'll see how it looks as it's crossing the Yucatan. That typically gives us a lot of clues once we see what it looks like. Uh, but a hurricane is forecast here at second landfall as well along the central eastern Mexican coastline by Saturday morning. All right, we're going to switch back out now and talk about our second storm, a tropical storm Henri, not Henry, Henri, southeast of Bermuda. And we'll take a close look here at the floater loop. And this is a system that we've been talking about dealing with a little bit of shear, but it has also been a lot stronger than models have expected and been kind of an overperformer, especially when it comes to global models like GFS and the ECNWF, which have not seen Henri and did not forecast it to form originally either. Now, there is a strong structure now showing up with curling mid-level structure to just the northeast of where the surface center likely is, which is likely just on the southwestern edge of the convection here. Strong outflow can be seen with the milky white cirrus fanning out here to the north and to the east. And we're seeing on water vapor imagery just a little bit of northerly flow coming down underneath of that outflow. You'll see the milky white cirrus expanding north and then some of this flow coming down underneath that from the north creating about 10 knots of shear right now. So not very strong values but enough to make Henri just a little bit asymmetric. Now it's moving pretty slowly as well. You can see on this loop it's not making a lot of progress, but in general it's been coming from the northwest and is very slowly turning westward now to the south of Bermuda. And Bermuda has been getting away with just breezy weather from this storm so far. Uh, not much rain happening with very few bands uh, expanding that far north. So, so far just a breezy day there. And that will likely continue as the storm keeps its distance over the next couple of days. Now as we go forward, shear is likely to pick up over Henri as we have this big ridge over the eastern seaboard bringing northeasterly flow aloft, and that is likely to intensify over this region over the next couple of days. And I can show you how that works on the H wharf forecast. This is the current situation with that northeasterly flow still kind of removed to the west of Henri, so shear is still light. But as we go forward about a day or a day and a half, We'll see that as Henri kind of moves westward, this northeasterly flow starts hitting it in the face and we get a little bit more shear and about a doubling of the current values to at least 20 or maybe even 25 knots of shear. And this could cause Henri to struggle to stay vertically coherent and if it tilts over too much, that could even induce weakening. And if we look at the mid-level moisture plot on H wharf, we'll see this happen where right now the surface center is stacked under the dark green uh, where the mid-level center is, indicating a vertically coherent structure. But as the shear picks up, 
we do start at C to struggle a little bit, and the center is on the northern edge of the green blob here, indicating that shear pushing everything toward the southwest side of the circulation. And on this particular H wharf run, we get a lot of weakening of the storm here. There is some uncertainty though, and Henri could hold together despite the shear. Prior runs of the H wharf showed a stronger system during the last 12 hours, and so there is some back and forth on the model runs showing some sensitivity and uh, the possibility that Henri is kind of dancing on the knife's edge with the moderate shear. It may tilt over and weaken, or it may defy the shear and stack anyway. Hurricanes do have the ability to intensify despite moderate levels of shear if other conditions are favorable. So at this point, there is some uncertainty in exactly how strong Henri will get. More interesting potentially is the track forecast. And what we're really watching here is, first of all, for Bermuda, uh, this ridge to the west of Bermuda off the eastern seaboard is directing Henri generally towards the southwest or west in the short term. And this is expected to keep it generally away from Bermuda here on the GFS. There's still a healthy distance there. So right now, only a tropical storm watch for the island, not expecting significant impacts. And then how far west and south on retracks will determine uh, kind of the rest of the loop that it's about to take. This ridge gets strong off the eastern seaboard during Wednesday and Thursday, continuing to direct Henri potentially even south of due west. And the stronger Henri is, the more likely it is to continue losing latitude and moving southwest. And then what happens eventually is this ridge will start to weaken, and the reason it does is because there's some troughing developing over the Great Lakes in New England, starts pressing down here and eroding this ridge a little bit. And so eventually that northeasterly steering flow kind of weakens and allows Henri to start turning more toward the north again. And we start to get this troughing over the Ohio Valley with this little weak uh, mid-level low on the GFS forecasted at day three, and this ridge to the north is weaker. So as we talked about in the last video, we are expecting some kind of a looping track like this turning north and then northeast eventually within five days or so to the east of the eastern seaboard of the United States. Now the uncertainty with the track is exactly where this turn occurs because Henri's forward motion and also how far southwest this curve dips is a little bit uncertain because it depends partly on how strong Henri remains despite the moderate shear. And as I just mentioned, there's some sensitivity to that forecast, a little bit of uncertainty in the intensity, and therefore some uncertainty in the track and the timing of this turn as well. And the timing of the turn matters because there's some complicated traffic going on to the north. I mentioned this cutoff low over the Ohio Valley, a short wave over New England, and a ridge developing to the north of all of that that's translating eastward. And this is a rather complex flow pattern. So as the storm moves north, there is an outside chance for the possibility that this grazes Canada or potentially coastal New England at some point. Right now, the consensus is that the track will remain offshore, but given the complexities of this ridge moving to the east and Henri's timing and location of its turn northward, we will be just warily watching for the chance that it comes far enough west to graze these areas on its way toward the northeast. At the moment, the consensus expectation is that it will stay offshore, and the current National Hurricane Center forecast shows that track curving sharply to the northeast by the weekend, and on Sunday morning it is well to the southeast of New England. We'll keep an eye on trends in that track just in case. Models have been struggling to handle Henri well, and that's another reason to just keep an eye on the forecast in case it shifts a little bit closer to North America. And as far as Bermuda is concerned, again, just a tropical storm watch here. The system should stay well to the south of the island, so just brisk easterly winds for the next couple of days as Henri makes pretty slow progress toward the west and eventually makes its turn, potentially bringing southwest wind there as it makes that turn as well. All right, that's it for now. Everyone stay safe. Looking for flooding in Jamaica and unfortunately had a lot in Hispaniola already. And then wind and water impacts potentially for the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico and for the Cayman Islands as well. And then down the road into the other part of Mexico on the east side. And we'll be watching Henri making its turn in the middle of the northwestern Atlantic. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.